please give us a warm round of applause for our next speaker, Natalie Silvanovic. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. Um, today I'm going to talk a bit about Tamagotchis and how to hack them. <laughs> I've always been more of a software hacker type. By day, I'm a security researcher at RIM, breaking BlackBerry. And you'll see there's a disclaimer up there, just in case you think my job involves hacking Tamagotchis. It rather unfortunately does not. <laughs> um, I also have a degree in electrical engineering, but um, I mostly learned how to make stuff, not break it. So this is one of my first um, forays into hardware hacking, and definitely my first time hacking something with such low computing power as a Tamagotchi. So today I'm going to tell you guys a bit about what I learned, both about hardware hacking and about interfacing with devices that you aren't supposed to interface with. So just in case anyone doesn't know, what are Tamagotchis? Um, Tamagotchis are virtual pet toys. They have a pet on the screen. You touch the keys, you feed the pet, um, you try to keep it alive. But as you might remember from the 90s, um, back then, life as a Tamagotchi was simple. You ate, you slept. If you didn't like things, you ran away. Nowadays, Tamagotchi life has become much more complex. They've got to go to school, get jobs, make friends, and if that doesn't go well, they can forget about getting married or having kids. <laughs> and how do they do this? Well, there is an IR interface in this antenna, and they can use it to form relationships with other Tamagotchis. <laughs> now, the latest um, Tamagotchi is the Tomatown Tomago, and that's what I mostly hacked. And it's the same thing. Um, inside, the boards are actually very similar. But it has this one new feature. It supports figures. And these figures have like games or items or restaurants that Tamagotchi can go to in them. And you put them on top, and then you can play with them. So um, those are the interfaces I was trying to hack um, while working with my Tamagotchis. So what are my goals here? Well, I was curious about these external communication channels, the IR and the figure, so I wanted to decode them. Also, I kind of wanted to um, dump the actual binary code um, off the Tamagotchi and see if I could reverse it. And I wanted to answer kind of what I call the deeper questions of Tamagotchi life. <laughs> If you go on to Tamagotchi forums, there are these vicious debates about things like, does your Tamagotchi's name affect what food it likes? Or, does how much a Tamagotchi sleep affect its happiness? And you know what? I want to put these to bed for once and for all. <laughs> also, of course, being a Tamagotchi fan, I want to cheat at Tamagotchi, have the richest and happiest Tamagotchis ever. And I thought it would be cool if it might be possible to um, get my own code to run on a Tamagotchi. You know how they make the TV be gone so that will turn off TVs using IR? Well, these things have IR. Maybe I could make a TV be gotchi. <laughs> and finally, I just wanted to have fun. Because you know all those cool kids going out, going to clubs? They just haven't discovered reverse engineering yet. <laughs> thing which was totally not my idea. I blame this guy on the Make blog. The idea of decoding the IR and eventually running around having my notebook impregnating innocent Tamagotchi devices <laughs> amuses me greatly. <laughs> so the first thing I looked at was the IR. And this was actually a couple of years ago, so I'm going to breeze through this. And I used the old device for it. Um, I set up my Arduino with an IR receiver and an IR LED, and I started off by listening to the communications, and eventually I used the LED to simulate the communications. And I did manage to um, decode the protocol pretty well. I could cheat at the game. I made my Tamagotchi a rich fake friend that gave it tons of tons of gifts. <laughs> 
had also really liked this friend, so it became very happy. Um, and I also discovered that, yes, the impregnation checks our client side, so you can totally um, do that too. But, yeah. Well, it was a lot of fun. I found it only gave me a superficial understanding of the functionality. And there were some things um, in the IR protocol I couldn't figure out, and I was just stuck if I couldn't, you know, figure it out by changing them. Well, that was it. So when the next version came out, I started thinking about um, how I could take it apart and find out actually more information about how it works. So of course, run to the store the first day it's out, get my five Tamagotchis, claim their gifts, and um, take it apart. <laughs> I also got some figures and took those apart. So um, this is the board of the Tamagotchi Tamago. Um, it's unfortunately a bit boring. Um, if you look at the front side, um, the only um, persistent device is an EEPROM that I have circled. The rest is resistors, capacitors, um, those other black things are different transistors. And on the back, there's a blob of epoxy, and that's it. I also took apart a figure, and that was kind of interesting. It turns out there's two types of figures. They're the cheap ones you get for free with the Tamagotchi, and those are called light figures. And they just had unpopulated PCBs in them, which act as jumpers, and those will unlock games that are already stored on the Tamagotchi. And then there are the pricey um, full figures, and um, they actually have a blob on them, and the um, information is actually stored inside the figure. So the first thing I wondered was, what type of microcontroller is it? Because without that, you really can't get very far. So, of course, what did I do? I ran around my hackerspace and asked everyone, do you know how to remove epoxy? And I got lots of very interesting ideas. The first person says, oh, dissolve it with acetone. I discovered that, well, acetone will dissolve the case of a Tamagotchi. It will not dissolve epoxy. <laughs> then someone said, well, you should heat it up. So I put it in the oven and got a very hot Tamagotchi. <laughs> but still had epoxy on it. <laughs> so then someone else suggested, um, you know, you should cut it off with a razor blade. So I tried that, but I found it, you didn't get a really good view of the die because you're kind of scraping part of it. So that really wasn't a winner. And then someone told me to use a chopstick. And this was one of these ideas where, you know, I was really, really sure it wouldn't work, but I thought, wow, if I burn it off with acid and it turns out I could have used a chopstick, I'll feel really, really stupid. And I rubbed it with a chopstick, and yeah, you totally cannot remove epoxy with a chopstick. <laughs> Uh, so I let this go for a while, and then I saw a talk by Travis Goodspeed at Source Boston on how he was decapping chips um, to identify radios. So I went and asked him about how you actually remove epoxy, and he kindly offered to decap the chip um, using nitric acid. So, lesson learned. If you're trying to torture a Tamagotchi into telling you it's microcontroller, um, acetone, heating it, razor blades, and um, rubbing it with a chopstick do not work. <laughs> Burning it with acid does. <laughs> so, after that, I got a chip that looked like this. And um, Travis described it using the strongest word in his vocabulary. He said it was unneighborly. <laughs> and... <laughs> There is only um, one marking on it, which is a serial number, which I have the close-up of. And there's actually one feature I didn't kind of notice at that point, but you'll notice that some of the pads are recessed on the bottom right side. So I had no idea how to identify this, so I started off by um, looking at every single blog I ever remembered having to cat chips on it. And I didn't find anything. So I thought, well, someone has to know. So I posted on my blog with a picture and asked. And it was interesting. I ask a lot of questions on the internet, and most of the answers I get are pretty good, and I'm actually quite indebted to all the help I get um, for doing this project. But there's also this phenomenon where people, when they don't know the answer, they'll guess. <laughs> so I got tons and tons of emails saying, it's a pick, 
it's a pic, it's a pic. And meanwhile, it looked nothing like the decap versions of a pic. So I sort of started going crazy. You know, is this some odd type of pic? But it turned out, eventually, I convinced myself it's not a pic. Um, then I decided, well, you know how this thing has cells? Well, maybe I'll count them. And you see the big memory banks? Maybe that will give me some idea of the specs. So I did that, but it didn't really help. And actually, after I identified it, I realized it was all completely wrong anyhow. So eventually what I did is I posted on the Tamagotchi forums. And I went on one of my favorite forums. It's called Seriously Tamagotchi. It's the serious and focused and mature Tamagotchi discussion forum. <laughs> and I figured if this isn't serious and focused and mature, what is? <laughs> so um, I, I asked around and I found out that actually a lot of my problem is because I'm not a Japanese speaker and actually Tamagotchis are all developed in Japanese. So, a lot of people did who were Japanese speakers and um, found like tidbits on forums that um, were useful. And one person saw someone who had worked for Tamagotchi posting about Motorola. And one person told me that the very first Tamagotchi had used a Seiko Epson chip. And then someone mentioned a company called General Plus that I looked up and found out it had, actually it was Sun Plus, and it had split into a company called General Plus. So I opened up some of these data sheets and I found that they all contained the pad layouts, so the locations where the pads actually are. And it was pretty easy to eliminate them. So this is where I wish I'd done something really, really cool. I wish I'd written a script that crawled the web and got the data sheets and mapped out the pad layouts. But I did not. I opened up one data sheet, and then I opened up another. And 237 data sheets later, I found the Tamagotchi microcontroller. <laughs> so it turns out that a ta the Tamagotchi runs a general plus um, GLPB series um, LCD controller. It's an 8-bit uh, microcontroller. It runs 6502 um, like a Commodore. And um, the other interesting thing is that it uses mask ROM. So um, the ROM is actually in the transistors. So unfortunately, there is no possibility of overwriting the ROM on a chip like that. So then I started thinking about, oh, how can I dump it? And one idea I had was there's that EEPROM, which um, keeps the state. So if you ha have to like change your battery, your Tamagotchi won't die. It's still in there. So I thought, you know, maybe if it has a stack or a pointer in there, I could restore it and use that code execution to um, dump the code. Um, also, the data sheet said something about test functionality, so I thought that might be a possibility. I also thought that um, the formats over IR and the format that's on the figure, right, maybe there is some uh, vulnerabilities in processing that, especially since they have images. So maybe that would be a way to run code that would eventually dump the code. Um, another possibility would be to read the ROM with a microscope, although I've heard that causes eye strain. Um, <laughs> also, there may be some way to manipulate the pins to actually dump the memory off the device, although I wouldn't know quite what that was. So the first thing I did was I went into the EEPROM and I attached really little wires and I used the Arduino library to dump it. And this actually went quite well. Um, the library was perfect, um, pretty much it dumped on the first try. And I looked at it, and um, unfortunately, it wasn't the sort of state I hoped it would be. It was actually just serialized data that was um, very um, similar to the um, infrared um, format. So you can see in there my birthday, the date that I did this on, my name, the how hungry my Tamagotchi is but nothing that I really thought um, that restoring would have any use. But I did play with it a bit. There was some fun stuff. I found it was very um, error sensitive, so most of the time if I changed it, it would just wipe it and restart. Um, if I did get it actually right, I could advance myself in the game, you know, have my um, FF years old Tamagotchi, and yeah, then it resets. and. Um, <laughs> you know, make it the happiest Tamagotchi that's ever lived. <laughs> so my, the next thought was, um, 
Well, if you look into the data sheet, um, and also the sheet you, you have to send in if you want to buy this microcontroller, um, it requires you to have a certain memory range reserved so that um, they can put a test program in there. And I'm fairly positive that this um, program would be able to dump code, because you imagine as being a company that um, burns mask ROMs, they probably have customers complaining they were burned wrong all the time. So having a way to prove they did it right is probably a good thing. Um, Unfortunately, I couldn't get the test program. I am um, contacted um, General Plus, and I might have given them the impression I was the CEO of a toy company that was having problems with our microcontrollers um, being too expensive and overpowered. And they were like, yeah, sign an NDA. So, yeah, I've looked around. Um, no one seems to have a dev kit or know the test program, unfortunately. So then I thought, well, maybe I'll play with the figure ROM. And I thought there could be a few, you know, fun things to do about this. One would be, oh, I could write my own Tamagotchi game. It could be possible the way that it works that I could execute code on the Tamagotchi. It might even let me dump the ROM. And hopefully, if nothing else, it would help me understand Tamagotchis a little bit better. So as I said earlier, there's the two types of figures, um, the regular figures that have the PCBs with the blobs, and there's the light figures um, with the jumpers. And something that was interesting um, outright was um, someone actually commented on my blog saying that they thought that um, there were multiple characters um, in the Tamagotchi figure ROMs, and there had been reports of people not putting them quite on right and getting different characters. So I started playing with um, putting like little jumpers on the contacts like there, there. and I did, ima did manage to um, unlock functionality in the figures. So it turns out that every figure actually contains three characters, it's just the plastic on top is different, and based on the jumpers it unlocks different things. So that's interesting. Um, that made, it, made me almost positive it contained a mask ROM, because the only way it makes any financial sense to do that is if, you're, um, if it's a mask ROM where the die is really expensive and it's cheap to have lots of copies, then you want to reduce the number of dies. If it was Flash or something, you know, they just program each one. The other interesting um, thing was um, that they gave you the unpopulated boards. So, you know, if you scrape them off a little bit, you could see where all the pads were. So I thought, well, might as well do the whole pad thing, um, except because I had a good vendor to start with, um, it didn't take very long. I found that General Plus makes an SPI ROM, and shockingly, the pads are on the exact same place as um, on the PCB. So I assumed the figure used that ROM, which was cool. So then I actually had um, what? the values of all these pins are. So then I used my Arduino to um, dump the um, ROM acting as an SPI master. And this was actually very painful because General Plus um, doesn't use SPI that's exactly SPI. So I had to, you know, generate all the waveforms and timing was a nightmare. But eventually I got it to dump and when I looked at it, it was pretty evident um, right away that there were strings of zeros and A's and F's, which when you think about a uh, four-tone display, that makes a lot of sense because um, for images, there's gonna be lots of pixels in rows and if you're um, looking at two-bit pixels, then they're either gonna be zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, or one, one, which corresponds to those strings in hex. So I assumed those were images, and then I traced back and found before them they were preceded by something that was reasonable for a width and a height. So I tried to decode them, and after a few um, decoding accidents, uh, I figured out the format and got the images. So there were lots of interesting things about this. Um, one was that the Tamagotchi, at least with regards to figuring, uh, figure handling, wasn't very smart. All the text was actually an image. And that was actually one thing that kind of drove me insane at first. I'm like searching through for these strings or even the patterns in these strings and I couldn't find them anywhere. And that's because they were actually images. Also, 
animations are all images. So even if it's something like the Tamagotchi playing with a ball, they actually have a picture of every single possible Tamagotchi playing with the ball, and every single frame is its own image. So they never you know, try to do something like just overlay the ball in the Tamagotchi's hand. There's actually a separate image drawn for every single type of Tamagotchi. So I tried to figure out what um, the rest of the ROM did. And I have to admit that when I started this project, I was very, very hopeful about dumping code. So one day I went crazy and wrote a disassembler for general plus code, you know, just in case one day I needed to um, disassemble it. Um, so I used this and I went and I searched through, you know, for any like four byte string that looked like um, general plus code and there was absolutely no code there at all. So I figured, you know, maybe like by EEPROM, it was serialized data. So then the, the next step was to simulate the flash because you can't really do it, or simulate the ROM, because you can't really do anything other than look at it if you have just read it. So I thought if I could change values, maybe it would start to become a lot clearer what they did. And I went looking for a compatible flash and General Plus told me they only deal in quantities of 100,000, but maybe they were just bitter and my toy company didn't choose them as a vendor. <laughs> um, so I attempted to simulate the ROM using an Arduino, but it was too slow. And this was sort of a comedy of errors. I started off with the Arduino, it sort of worked, and then eventually I realized it was timing, it was too slow. So I upgraded, I got a Chip Kiduno, which has a pick in it and was a bit faster. And this actually like drove me insane. It would work for a little bit and then it would stop working. And it did this so many times. And eventually I figured out that the Tamagotchi actually speeds up while reading. If it's reading something sensitive, like serialized data, it'll read slowly so it doesn't get corrupted. If it's reading the pixels of an image, it'll go super fast, because I guess it doesn't matter if a little bit of an image gets flipped. So when I eventually figured this out, I realized that the chip I had ordered was also too slow. So I found another one, um, an SD microcontroller discovery board, and that one was finally fast enough. So there's my setup. Um, what do I say? I'll shorten wires when I'm dead. So I could do some cool stuff. I knew the image format, so I could alter the images. Um, so normally there's something like a wardrobe in the background um, when you attach a figure. So I made it my initials. Um, also, it didn't check the size um, other than it's smaller than the LCD, so you could take over the whole screen. Um, unfortunately, I was hoping it might overflow the LCD RAM, but it doesn't. Um, also, one of the fun things about simulating a chip is you can do things the chip can't do. So, a Tamagotchi will assume every time it pulls the memory, the stuff is the same. But that's not necessarily the case when it's actually um, a microcontroller board. So, I could do something that wasn't supported, like playing an animation. wondering about while doing this is how does it actually work? Because, well, it does do a lot of images, right? It also does games. And, you know, how do the games work if there isn't any code there? How do the items work? And what perplexed me even more was the fact that it pulled less than 50 bytes of non-image data through the entire process of putting on a figure. Yeah, actually, exactly, um, 0x30 zero, zero um, bytes. And this was, I started changing them, and eventually I figured out what was happening. And it turns out the game logic is represented by one byte, which sounds really odd. And it turns out that pretty much there's 30 values and all the game logic 
is in the, those 30 values. And I got to thinking about it, that sort of makes sense. You know, there's the game where you whack the thing back and forth, and there's the game where you hop over stuff, and there's the game where you guess which cards are matching. You know, even though the images are different, yeah, I can sort of buy that there's actually only 25 Tamagotchi games. And I, I did play with this a bit, and I'm quite confident that that's actually how it works. What was even weirder, though, is what happens if you jump to something outside of those 25 values? And it started taking me to other Tamagotchi screens that had nothing to do with the figure. So it would take me to the screen where you fed the Tamagotchi, or where it gave the Tamagotchi a bath. And if I pressed the back button, it wouldn't take me back to the figure, it would take me back to the normal screen, which you would get to from that screen. Which I guess that means, like the way I picture it at least, is that a Tamagotchi is just one really big switch statement. And um, <laughs> when you uh, press a button, it jumps there, and then maybe if you do something else, it jumps back there. And of course, if you hit the back button, it goes to the pre-programmed where it's supposed to jump back. So I thought that was fairly interesting, and I guess it kind of shows you how simple um, this sort of um, system is, where it can't support stuff, um, even like um, doing animations or displaying text on the screen. Pretty much everything is, you know, pixels and jumping. And also I saw a bit of, a lot of freezing, but I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, so here is a, another um, demo. This was, instead of jumping to a game, um, I jumped to making the Tamagotchi evolve, so making it get older. <laughs> And the N is my really terrible attempt at drawing a Tamagotchi sprite. So yeah, you can totally cheat at Tamagotchi. So what's unfortunate is that you can't use the intended functionality at the very least to jump outside of what a Tamagotchi can do because everything's just a code that jumps into other code. So unless there's some sort of error, which is still a possibility, uh, you, you can't um, be executing custom code using this functionality. I did wonder quite a bit about the freezing that sometimes happened if I used an invalid code. And unfortunately, that's fairly difficult to diagnose. One possibility is that it's intentional if invalid code jumped to something, and maybe that's where they would attach a deb debugger. But I also wondered what was happening because I could only access screens that my Tamagotchi could access. So for example, if, as your Tamagotchi gets older, it will be able to access different games, but I could only access the games my Tamagotchi could access. So it's also possible that what's happening is it's freezing due to some sort of bug with accessing something that your current Tamagotchi can't access. And I'm not sure what that would be. It could be something completely useless, like you get stuck in a loop. Um, it could be memory corruption, but I suspect that's not the case um, just because it crashed the same way every time. Although since um, Tamagotchis don't have a dynamic heap or anything, it's possible that it is corrupting memory and just always dying exactly the same way. 
But regardless of the case, um, this is something that would be um, fairly difficult to diagnose considering I was getting absolutely no screen output when it was um, crashing. It would just freeze really, really hard and I had to remove the batteries to get it started. So I think with what I know, um, dumping the code using the figure um, would likely be difficult. So um, unfortunately, this is where I'm at right now. I found a lot of ways to um, cheat at Tamagotchi um, using the IR, the EEPROM, or the figure ROM. Uh, I feel like I learned a lot of really interesting things about how Tamagotchis work and how they're programmed, but I'm still trying to dump the code. I'm still tampering with the figure ROM, and I am hint, hint, looking for the test program. You know, if there's someone out there, maybe that happens to be you, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Um, and the same goes for any other ideas of how to dump the ROM. And most importantly, good times were had by all, except for the Tamagotchis. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now we've got about half an hour left for Q&A. If you plan to leave early, please try to do so now, because it's very annoying in this room if people leave during the Q&A. And otherwise, if you have to leave, please be very, very quiet. Also, for the people in the stream, you can ask questions using ISC or Twitter. We prefer ISC, but you can also use Twitter if you really want to. Just going to take a few more minutes for the people to leave, and then we're going to start. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we're going to do the Q&A by standing up and lining up at the mics. We have one over there, one over there, and one over there. So if you have a question, just line up there. Yeah. Okay, I think we can start in about 30 seconds. Okay, in the middle, please. Hi, uh, this might not solve the problem, but maybe it can make you advance one step. Being an electric engineer, you're probably uh, also accessible to lab equipment. Have you considered using differential power analysis on the CPU or whatever to try to guess more about the flow of code or what it does? You know, I haven't thought of that. Uh, th that's an interesting idea. 
you can get in touch, I think, after the talk, or her contact information should be in the wiki. Yeah, my so. contact information is right up there, you know, just and in case it. someone wants to send me the test program. <laughs> Okay, and now to the left, please. You, uh, yeah. that's left. Uh, well, first of all, about the test program, I've hacked a few Sun Plus, uh, General Plus chips myself. Don't be too hopeful. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, secondly, um, uh, uh, most, uh, most embedded uh, uh, system on a chip uh, uh, devices like this have a debugging port, which is usually a basic serial port. Uh, uh, you have a TXD and an RXD pin. And if you're lucky and the developers actually left the debugging code uh, in there, you can just just hook a serial um, uh, uh, bus to it and, and then just read whatever the Tamagotchi is thinking. Uh, have you tried that? Um, unfortunately, like I I've looked quite hard for that type of functionality and I haven't found any. I think with this type of uh, microcontroller, because pretty much you use the programmable dev chip first and then you have the mask ROM made, I suspect that the programmable chip does have that type of functionality, but they don't leave it in um, when they actually make the one with the mask ROM. Okay, and now the internet also has questions. So the internet wants to know what versions of the Tamagotchis you use so that the internet can go off and uh, buy the right versions of the Tamagotchis. <laughs> um, well, for the IR, I used um, the, the Tamagotchi V4, and for um, the rest of it, I used the Tama Town Tamago, and there's actually only one version of that out. And yes, if you want to do this at home, there is Tamagotchi Hack on GitHub, and you can download all the code for this. Okay, and to the right, please. Yeah, uh, your picture of the mashed up Tamagotchi pile at the end kind of reminded me of Portal 2. <laughs> so maybe you are something like GLaDOS to the Tamagotchis. <laughs> um, now, you, you said at the beginning that you were trying to figure out something about the deeper meanings of their life or something. Now, uh, <laughs> if there was a, let's say, 13-year-old person to whom Tamagotchis are very important approaching you and asking you what you found out, would there be anything important that you will tell them, maybe about life after death or something? <laughs> Um, well, it's funny, actually. The IR, um, I discovered some very interesting things about, I guess, w right, how many bits a Tamagotchi is represented by. So it turned out things like the Tamagotchi's gender was actually represented by three bits. Um, <laughs> One was how it showed up, like what it looked like, and one was, you know, how it was displayed in the stats. And I couldn't figure out what the third one does, but it, it, it was definitely related to the other two. So I think that tells you a bit about how Tamagotchis feel about themselves. But the other interesting thing was about the relationships between Tamagotchis. So I found out that too much unreciprocated gift giving will actually damage a Tamagotchi's relationship. So if you give in a couple of gifts, you got to wait for them to give you one back. Um, also, I found out it doesn't matter how nice a gift is. It only increases how much the Tamagotchi likes you so much. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. And now one question from the internet. The internet also wants to know where the cartoon pictures come from, whether there is sort of, a, sort of a TV show or anything like that. I can't believe you're asking such a question. They come, <laughs> they come from a cinematic masterpiece known as Tamagotchi the Movie. Okay, and now you to the right. Well, the previous gentleman slightly stole one of my questions because I was struck that you've got here to the Tamagotchis an entity outside of their world that is influencing their evolution and <laughs> rewarding some of them over others and I was going to accuse you of being Tamagotchi Cthulhu but um, <laughs> I want to say that uh, I'm, I'm not really from the hardware hacking side of things I, I'm, I'm more messed with software and what you've just given us has been a really great introductory um, talk on hardware hacking, what's involved in it, how to get into it, whether it's a, t a Tamagotchi or whatever it is that you're trying to hack. And I just want to say thank you for doing that because it was a very illuminating uh, talk.
and now the internet. So you've taken these pictures from the microcontroller, right? And the question is whether you have high, resolu high resolution photographs to, so that people can try to uh, reverse engineer the chip from the photographs. Uh, I'm trying to think here. Um, definitely, if you find the ones that are online um, not high enough resolution, um, please contact me and I'll give you some higher resolution ones. Um, if you look at the size of the PowerPoint presentation attached to the description of this talk, though, you will find it is very large and there are several high re resolution photos already in there. Okay, now to the right, please. Um. I, I did not completely understand uh, the thing you uh, said about simulating the ROM. Um, how does it work? Uh, the, the chip has a mask ROM in it. Uh, are you able to disable this ROM and simulate it from the, uh, from the STM controller, or how does it work? Yeah, that, that's pretty much what I did. Actually, let's see if, do I show it very well here? Probably not. No, um, what I did is I took out the, there's the pins that you connect to, so I pretty much cut this piece of plastic off and I took um, pins out and then I attached um, microcontroller pins there. And then what I did is when I, I, I used the light figure, which is just the jumper, and I slid it on and then because that one doesn't have a ROM in it, um, it took the data from the microcontroller board. Although you could also do it, um, since it's actually just a jumper, by just putting down a piece of wire so it's connected, and that would make it work too. Thank you. Uh, are you done? Yeah? Okay. Then the internet. So the most pressing question from the internet is, how many Tamagotchis did you actually lose? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to remember here. I, I guess at least 10 were completely destroyed. <laughs> And then there's a few other in varying um, states of functionality. <laughs> I, I don't pretend to be a Tamagotchi humanitarian. Um, does anyone on the left side have questions? Because it seems a bit unbalanced. <laughs> no. Okay, then on with the internet. No? Okay. No questions at all. Well, thank you. And could I get... A you got a question? Yeah. Go to the mic, please. Um, it's probably because I am a bit ignorant to hardware hacking, but can you go more into how you use the Arduino to, because you said you used the Arduino and an LED to um, hack into the uh, infrared communications. And this almost implies that you watch the LED flashing and read binary code off the LED by sight, which I, I wouldn't think you'd have done. <laughs> so could you um, just expand on that a bit, how you, how you broke into the IR code with the Arduino? Yeah. Um, I may not have been clear on that. The LED I used was an IR LED, uh, LED so it was the transmitter. So pretty much I had a receiver and you'd get a one and zero off of that. I started by looking at the waveforms there and I found out, you know, there was one really fat waveform and one really thin waveform. So I figured that was one or zero and then I picked the lower power one being zero and th that ended up with, you know, you could decode the binary. I'm doing that pretty much just by pulling the signal um, from the um, Arduino board. And, and that was actually quite painful in terms of timing. If you did things at a little bit the wrong time, you, you'd get bad data. So my code looks awful with like stuff that's heavy on instructions in the most bizarre place so they don't interrupt with reading. And, and then once I did that, I had some ideas of what was being sent, like the Tamagotchi's name. So I looked for the patterns that would represent that and then started with the format that way. More questions from the internet? In fact, yes. So which IR base encoding is used? SIR or simply an UART connected to the LED? Sorry, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Um, Can you repeat it, please? All right. So which IR base encoding is used? SIR or simply an UART connected to LED? Um, I called it nearly neck because it was kind of sort of maybe neck, but not quite. Okay, is that all? 
Then just one more announcement. We still need some angels for the night shifts, so if you're not really into sleeping anyway, um, <laughs> just go to the heaven and sign up for some shifts. We would really appreciate it. Otherwise, please take your trash with you and give her another round of applause, please.